I'm Jeremy Scott. I'm a tarot coach, spiritual philosopher, and an intuitive thinker. And I'm using this platform to raise awareness that as the Earth re-emerges from everything that's been going on recently into perhaps a new way of living, what do we need to do? What direction are we going to go in so that we can all live together in a more peaceable, unifying, nurturing and cooperative way so that we can focus on the things that bring us together rather than the things that divide us? So I'm using this platform to raise awareness about these issues and others that are related to that. Welcome to Re-Emerging Earth. I think we can uh, all agree that we're living in very unusual, unprecedented times. And I'm not just referring to the pandemic that's current, but also throughout the 20th into the 21st century with all the different things that were going on, all the wars raging around the world, all the terrorist activity and things like that that have been happening, all the different diseases, outbreaks, epidemics, pandemics that have been happening. And no doubt after this current pandemic is finished that the wars and things like that will indeed return. Why is that? Why are we like that? Are we just a warring race? We just like to go around killing each other, doing harm to each other? Is that what we're wired for? You know, is that hardwired into our brains just to destroy things? Have a period of time when we build up something really beautiful and then spend the rest of the time just destroying it? It doesn't seem right to me. And looking into it, I know there's many others who feel the same. So could it be then that what we're doing at this current moment in time has been perhaps foretold, predicted, expected, guided, manipulated even? And that's what I'm going to start looking into. And in this episode, I'm going to start by looking at our origins, where we actually came from, which may have led us to where we are now. And could that be really the five or six thousand years that many believe, especially in the world of, say, the Christian religion and other religions, where we created only five or six thousand years ago by divine being or beings, or does it go beyond that as fossil evidence is providing some 200,000 years or even further back with even more ancient civilizations being uncovered around the world? Where did we actually come from? You know, and that's the point of this podcast is to address such questions or try to anyway and find possible solutions. So in this episode, I'm going to be looking at in the beginning. Depending on which camp you sit in will depend how you view where we come from. Before Charles Darwin brought out his book on, on the on origin of species, majority, if not everyone, was in the curation camp because that's what religion dictated. That's what the church or the mosque or the meeting temple, whatever it happened to be, that's what they dictated. However, there were also a lot of unhappy people around at that time. Perhaps they were classing themselves as atheists or whatever. And these were a lot of these were like scientists and so on. Because at that time, archaeology and the like was taking off. You know, and people were finding things that didn't quite fit in with the church's way 
of putting things across didn't fit in with the biblical view of how we were uh, how we came onto this planet where we came from so they were beginning to question things and then it was later on that you now quantum mechanics came into it and also then with Charles Darwin the advent of evolution and that obviously kicked off a huge change in thinking because then those who didn't want to follow the religious path had something else to believe in a kind of new religion and the war between creationism and evolution started you could say and it's been battling on ever since for the last 150 or so years and obviously in the sort of early 20th century like I mentioned quantum mechanics came into it, quantum science and that's gaining more ground now especially with the uh, those who think even further outside the box you could say because now they've discovered that dark matter actually does exist and we're all part of a kind of matrix kind of situation as not not as in the film but in, a, in the sense of that we are all joined together by energy we're all connected and at the very basic level we are all energy some will take that further and say we're light beings and we come to this planet to experience a certain kind of life and even that kind of philosophy isn't new because older philosophers in the past have talked about such things the thing is whether it's from religion whether it's from a scientific world or, you know whether it's from evolutionists not one part of this has ever been conclusively proved every single part of it is a theory creation is a theory yet we believed in it for thousands of years you know whether we came from a Jewish background or whether we came from a from an Islamic background or whether from a Christian fundamentalist background or any other Christian background or even other religions have their own creation stories we've all believed that it's true yet it hasn't been proved it hasn't been proved there's lots of stories a lot of anecdotal evidence there's a lot of you know, drawings on walls carvings artifacts a lot of old texts but nothing conclusive nothing to say yeah here's the creator this is where we came from we just believe it the same goes for evolution that is exactly the same because that hasn't been conclusively proved either because we don't fit into that humans don't fit into that model it works when it comes to nature you can see how nature over time has evolved how certain animals have either evolved into a completely new species as Darwin suggests we would do over a period of time or they've adapted to their situation the new situation I remember reading years and years ago I'm not quite sure where it is now but it's like a mountainous freshwater lake and it's got fish in it that originally came from the sea you know they're actually saltwater fish living in a freshwater lake and there's no way up there other than at one time obviously thousands or millions of years ago the that area must have been flooded and they must have got in through that way you know, and then that's that's how they became part of that environment but the humans we didn't come from that we didn't come in to that kind of situation we are not part of that evolutionary story that narrative 
Because what they've recently found, researchers and that I'm talking about early, so sort of late 20th into the early 21st century now, what they've found is that we, who used to be called Cro-Magnon, are now called anatomically modern humans because we originated, we appeared over 200,000 years ago. And this is from fossil evidence, you know, dated back to that time. And also, during that time, we haven't changed. Not dramatically. Slight changes here and there. Maybe size of skull or something like that, or maybe a bit more upright or something. But we haven't changed. And the other astounding fact is that we appear to have been genetically manipulated. And there is obviously some discussion about that, a lot of debate about that. They don't go as far as to say, yes, we were absolutely created. Because this is where the evolution side of things starts to meet creation theory. They don't go that far. But there's two chromosomes, chromosome 2 and chromosome 7 in the human body, which apparently have been manipulated. Chromosome 2 has got a fusion of other chromosomes in it, or genes or whatever. I think it's chromosomes, as has uh, 7. And that's given us the, the larger brain, it's given us the complexity of speech, thought, reasoning, and so on. And that's why we have that, and that's why we are further along, say, than the chimpanzees, who are our closest relatives. They've got 98% of our DNA, yet they've still got the extra chromosomes as separate. It does make you wonder if, I wonder yeah, if those two chromosomes were manipulated, that they have extra, would they turn out to be like us? And have experiments already taken place? <laughs> I'm sure they have, but we haven't heard anything about that. Certainly not officially. But the thing is, we are not descended, obviously, from the chimpanzees. That's obvious, otherwise they wouldn't still be around, would they? And as long held, you know, the thought was that we were also descended from Neanderthals, because many people, especially in Northern Europe and that, have the DNA from Neanderthals. But in fact, it's been found out as well, sort of into, uh, I think it was in the 90s, that the Neanderthals were actually our contemporaries 50,000 years ago or whatever. And they were actually part of our environment. So if we've got DNA in us from Neanderthals, it's probably through interbreeding at that time. And they were a different species of human. And also, all the other species of humans, and you're talking like Lucy was, what, four, four and a half million years ago? Where was that found? Ethiopia, somewhere like that? Uh, they were all separate as well, different. They weren't part of us, because there's no connection to them. I say, as yet. As yet. That missing link, the infamous missing link, has not as yet been found despite what films and cartoons and that say. <laughs> no. There's no connection, because when you look at the kind of ancestry tree, or ancestor tree, or whatever you want to call it, that the scientists write out, or draw out, evolutionists draw out, you know, to talk about us humans and our uh, evolvement, it lists all these different species of humans, and there's quite a few of them. However, there's no direct line linking them to us. We are a new species of human that just appeared out of nowhere and apparently haven't evolved from any of the others. So were, were we perhaps a, a separate species of human at that time who were chosen by whoever to be worked on, to be genetically modified, so that we could end up being us. 
Now, in the uh, first five books of the Bible, it's known as the Torah. So what's that? See if I can remember them. You've got Genesis, Exodus, uh, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. Okay. So those are held sacred, obviously, by uh, Muslims, Christians, and Jews alike. And obviously the, the make make up the Bible, make up the, the Hebrew scriptures, which, which, sorry, which is what the, the Jewish faith looks towards, holds to. And then after that, obviously, you've got the what's known as the Greek, Christian Greek scriptures, or the New Testament, which obviously Christians and that have added on at a later date. But the first five books, they're important because they tell the story of our creation and what happened shortly afterwards. And many have taken that as literal and saying, yes, God created us all. Now, I created Adam and Eve, and from there we moved on. Now, I spent a good 14 years with Jehovah's Witnesses, and I studied the Bible back to front many, many times, several times over the years, over those years, because that was a big part, or is still a big part of their faith, and that's a study of the Bible. Now, obviously, they have their own interpretation. However, there was still a lot of things that come out of that which were very, very useful, you know. And I would say are pretty close to the truth, if not the truth in that sense. I mean, they highlighted all the historical evidence and so on, which has been proved through archaeology and so on. However, there's other things that didn't sit right with me, and I questioned right from the start. For example, if Adam and Eve were the first two people on the planet, where did everybody else come from? That meant that there's a lot of incest involved, and we are all products of incest. Is that why we run around killing each other? Because we've got all that anger within us? No, because it's been inbred. We're all inbred. And I said, well, how could that be? How could God let that happen? The answer I got was, well, back then they were perfect. They were created perfect and it wouldn't have mattered. He allowed it at that time because of human perfection at that time. Okay, then what about later on after the flood? Because apparently then all you had was Noah and his wife, and a couple of sons and a couple of wives. So that meant another world civilization created through incest. Well, they were still classes perfect, or nearly perfect. A little bit less so, but nearly perfect. <laughs> I've never found those answers satisfactory. And I'm sure you wouldn't either, when you look at it from that angle. Because when you, when you go back into that history, right, or the account, let's say, biblical history at least, if you go into that account, it talks about you know, when Cain kills Abel, he goes off to another land you know, and marries people, has wives and forms another nation. It becomes Canaan. But where did they all come from? And if they were already there as part of his seed, so to speak, his tribe, what was he doing back with his mum and dad? And that left only Zeth then. So that meant him and his mum and any daughters and sisters or whatever afterwards. Now it just doesn't sit right, does it? It's not a satisfactory answer. I think that's just the only way, not just Jehovah's Witnesses, but most Christian religions, it's the only way they can explain it. However, this new discovery about being genetically modified also has another twist to it, because most civilizations are thought to have developed in Sumer and, and uh, Mesopotamia. You know, they were the first civilizations, and it, you know it's been up to now. It's been considered uh, it must have been about five, six thousand years ago. But now we're uncovering ancient civilizations which are even twice that age, 
such as in Göbekli Tepe in southeastern Turkey. Well, I think it was an early 20th century that that was found, 1912, something like that, that was first discovered, but it wasn't started, it didn't really start looking at it properly until 90s, I think, if I'm right. Uh, and even now, they've only uncovered 5% of it, but because of the political situation, it's difficult to work there. In fact, they can't work there at the moment. But the thing about that is, not only is it like a huge temple complex, there's, and there's, uh, there's a lot more history obviously involved in the 95% that hasn't been uncovered as yet. It's long before the Sumerian. Now it goes back to uh, what, what uh, researchers estimate to be at least 11,500 to 12,000 years. So back to the end of the last ice age. And what was significant about this particular site is that it was or had been deliberately buried. It wasn't in ruins, wasn't toppled over, wasn't decaying. It had been carefully backfilled and covered as if to say, right, we're putting you here, we're covering you over, we'll come back for you later. That kind of situation. So who did that? And why? Well, one speculation is that because they knew some great cataclysm was going to happen, such as the worldwide flood. And that's another thing with the biblical accounts. They put the floods after Adam and Eve and so on, so maybe a thousand years after creation, two thousand years. However, what is known is that after the last ice age, when it started to cool down and that, it rained for 4,000 years. 4,000 years of rain. Can you believe that? So you can imagine what kind of deluge that would have created all around the world. And that would explain why so many indigenous peoples all around the world have the same kind of flood story. So otherwise, it would only have been in the Middle East, wouldn't it? would have only been just in that localized area. But now, all these stories from all around the world, some evidence as well that a flood took place in these areas, not everywhere, because not everywhere, I don't believe every single area was covered in, on, the, on the planet. There were some areas that, that weren't, but certainly affected maybe by heavy rains and things, but not flooded in, in the sense of the deluge. And there's certainly evidence of that in practically every single indigenous history, indigenous account of the times. And in the Sumerian text, it goes a stage further as to getting back to why we were here, why we were created. It says that we were enslaved by beings from off the planet, so extraterrestrials in that sense, and they call them, uh, I think it's Arcadians, and it's, apparently these ones crash landed on Earth after a big battle up there either in the solar system or nearby, uh, and weren't or were prevented from leaving the planet, or at least the solar system. And these beings obviously had advanced knowledge and so on, and needed feeding. So they created a slave race to do all the farming. And they have found farms, or original farms and so on, in the area close to Gebleki Tepli and other places in Sumer. Mesopotamia and all that area. And, but why were they genetically modified? So they could think and reason for themselves to an extent, but so they could maybe accept instructions, could talk, that kind of thing, I suppose. 
still speculation about that. And there is in the texts itself, the Sumerian texts, they talk about certain gods, a female god being in charge of like cloning or something like biological cloning, you know, that kind of thing. She was involved or the master of master of mysteries of genetics and working in hand with another of these gods who wanted the humans or the human race to be free to be free from enslavement to his uh, compatriot god you know his, his buddy because he didn't believe that we should be enslaved in such a way Apparently we were also being used as cannon fodder, so to speak. He was creating an army, and that put me in mind of, you know, Star Wars, the Clone Wars, where, you know, you had the bounty hunter, his skills were taken and put into fighting troops, and so on, creating a huge army. So maybe that was the case as well, you're building an army, this renegade god who's the leader of this particular maybe spaceship vessel whatever oh yeah and uh, apparently they were an, a reptilian race as well or reptilian looking race as well with elongated heads and so on and some believe they're still around in one way shape or form that's all pure speculation we, we haven't got any proof of that Although, there's some very compelling evidence that have been found in Peru. There are several bodies found with hugely elongated heads that were not forced. Because I think I believe there's a tribe in Africa that from birth, I think it may be just the females, who have their heads bound so that they, you know, they develop these elongated skulls doesn't do them any harm I don't believe in in the physical sense although to be honest I don't fully know how that works but uh, I'm not so sure I'd like to grow up like that but apparently it's, it's, a, it's a, a thing of status and it could well be that they are the leaders or the queens of the tribes because then that's the connection to these extraterrestrials that created us in that sense. Yeah. Lots of stories like that. Lots of theories. But here's, here's something that does say in the Bible, which kind of corresponds with the Sumerian uh, account of how we were created. And that's the story of Satan being chucked out of heaven and coming down to the vicinity of the earth. That's in the Bible. And obviously they, he brought down his, his army, whatever the, the angels that were with him. And some of those who actually start to teach mankind the different skills about fire, about speech and magic and all kinds of things like that. And apparently... Well, according to the Bible, Satan's been given dominion of the earth. So he's the controller. The owner, if you like. And that ties in with the Sumerian text as well, doesn't it? Because if they were not allowed to leave the planet or to leave the solar system, which means they're still here, maybe underground or other ways, maybe around, Satan's the same. You know, it's a corresponding story in that way. So whether the biblical writers got that from the Sumerian text and just reinvented it to suit their own purposes, or whether you know, that's something that they've brought up or thought up themselves, I favour the former, I reckon, is probably based on the Sumerian sort of story. So, where have we come from? Seems like we just appeared out of nowhere. 
also seems like we may have been created by someone far more intelligent and advanced than us. Seems like those creators may even still be around, or at least their descendants. So interesting thoughts of where we've come from and I'm sure I'll, I'll go into this further as time goes on. But for now, just wanted to leave you with that thought that we were created but still not 100% conclusively proved as to how or by who or by whom, should I say, in proper English. <laughs> yeah, so, I'll leave that thought with you. What, you know, leave, leave a, a comment. Let me know what you think could be the reason for that. And if you feel there's any substance to these thoughts, just from me, but from Sumerian texts, ancient texts, there's a lot of other ancient texts talk about extraterrestrials as well and their involvement in our creation different gods and so on can be linked back different stories but certainly as time goes on it's being proved that what we thought was our time period here on this planet is far far from being five or six thousand years that we've been told for thousands a couple of thousand years or more love to hear your thoughts looking forward to speaking with you again very very soon